Hello war fighters, war is hell. I'm going to be playing through the Battlefield 1 campaign, but in every episode I wanted to talk about some of the history that corresponds with this particular story that they're telling in Battlefield 1. So for this first section, you're actually playing as a member of the Harlem Hellfighters. And so I wanted to be able to start off by talking about them and what a phenomenal unit they are because I think this is one of those things about World War 1 that not too many people know about uh, and it really should because it's such an inspirational story. So the Harlem Hellfighters were originally uh, a New York National Guard regiment. They were the 15th New York National Guard regiment, and they were originally formed in 1913. But in 1917, they became the 369th Infantry Regiment. They were consisted uh, of African Americans as well as Puerto Ricans. They were given the name Harlem Hellfighters, uh, the Black Rattlers, and the Men of Bronze. But the reason why they were given the name the Hellfighters, this is really cool. They never lost a man to capture, they never lost a trench, or a foot of ground of the enemy. Uh, during the entire war, there was only one objective that they failed to complete, but really that was because of ignorance from those above them, so you really can't attribute that all to them. Um, on one particular tour, they were out for over six months, 191 days to be exact, which was the longest deployment of any unit uh, in World War I. Now, during the war, General Pershing, who was the general in command of all American forces, wanted America to fight as American units in World War I. They did not want to be integrated into British and French units as replacements, which is what the UK and France wanted at the time. He wanted American units led by American officers fighting under the American flag. That was unless you were African American. Um, in April of 1918, the Hellfighters were assigned to the French Army for the duration of the United States' participation in the war. Because they were assigned to the French Army, they were issued French weapons, French helmets, uh, brown leather belts and pouches, but they were still allowed to continue to wear their United States uniforms. Um, and so they were a part of a lot of French campaigns. When you're talking about the Hellfighters, though, you really also have to look at the environment and the discrimination uh, that they faced. Now, it was difficult for a lot of African Americans to actually enter into military service prior to, and to some degree during World War I, because there was a belief that African Americans wouldn't do well in combat, both from a physical and a mental perspective. And it, I just want to say this here, it infuriates me that I'm even talking about this, um, but it's important to know. Many African-American units during World War I were labor units. They would cut down wood, uh, they would unload ships, they would dig latrines, and basically do anything that would prohibit them uh, and keep them away from being in combat. Even being put as a French unit, as I was talking about earlier with what General Pershing wanted, that in and of itself was an act of discrimination as many white soldiers and officers refused to fight alongside or even share trenches with African-Americans. Now, to further show the type of discrimination that they faced, the American Expeditionary Force Headquarters uh, went and released a pamphlet called The Secret Information Concerning Black American Troops. Now, this warned French civilians, and I'm, I'm doing quotation marks with my fingers, warned French uh, civilian authorities of the alleged inferior nature and supposed rapist tendencies of African Americans. Um, there was another document that the Americans sent to the French later on in the war saying that they should not treat African Americans as equals because they don't want African Americans to come back to the United States and who feel as if they should be treated as equals. So this is the type of environment 
that many of the Hellfighters faced throughout the entire war. Um, now, when you talk about the Harlem Hellfighters 2, you also have to talk about the story of Henry Johnson. Uh, this is a really cool and amazing story, also sad at the same time. Now, Henry Johnson was born in 1892, and he enlisted in 1917. He's one of the most famous members of the Hellfighters, and Theodore Roosevelt called him one of the five bravest American soldiers in the war. So, it's about May 14th, 15th, 1918 in the Argonne Forest, and Henry Johnson is manning a listening post in no man's land with Needham Roberts. Uh, now, a listening post is basically just that. You would sit there and kind of try and figure out what the opposing side was doing. A lot of it was just listening, trying to understand what's going on. So, Needham Roberts, who is sharing the the hole with Henry Johnson starts to hear a clicking sound in front of them and they soon figure out that it's barbed wire that's being cut uh, and they start to think that it might be a German raid. So they start to gather their grenades for the fight and everything and the Germans do end up attacking him. Needham Roberts is wounded really early and pretty badly in the fight leaving Henry Johnson as the only person to be able to protect their position. Unfortunately Henry Johnson loads a French cartridge into an American gun that he had, which makes his weapon completely unusable at this point. So it makes it so now Henry Johnson is not only the only one who's trying to hold their position, but he has no gun to be able to do it with. Well, no usable gun. So when the Germans are right on top of their position uh, for what Henry Johnson says, what seemed like an hour, he starts to defend that position using the butt end of his gun and a bolo knife. He gets wounded 21 times during the fight, but Henry Johnson single-handedly pushes back the force of around 24 German soldiers, and he kills four of them. One of the German soldiers he ends up killing by stabbing them in the head with his bolo knife. Brutal. So for his heroism, the French quickly award uh, Henry Johnson the Croix de Guerre, which is the highest military honor the French can give. It's basically the American equivalent of the Medal of Honor. Uh, he's the first American, black or white, to receive this award. So it's a really, really big deal. The United States, they give him nothing. They award him nothing. It's not until 1996 that Henry Johnson receives the Purple Heart. He's awarded the Distinguished Service Cross in 2002. And after a number of attempts to be able to get it, he's awarded the Medal of Honor in 2015. It goes without saying, if he was white, he would have received all of those in 1918. Like, he could have been a Medal Award winner earlier, but just because of the color of his skin, it took him so much longer to be able to receive that, almost 100 years. When Henry Johnson comes home, he goes on a series of lecture tours. I mean, the New York Post did an article about him. He was somewhat famous. Uh, one evening, though, in St. Louis, he was asked to be able to give uh, a speech about... It was supposed to be racial harmony that existed in the trenches. Now, you and I know that that's a load of crock, and he did, too. So he instead talks about the abuse and racism that he and other black soldiers experienced. Soon after giving that speech, he's quickly arrested... Uh, for on the charge of wearing his uniform beyond the prescribed date of his commission and no one was willing to pay for him to speak after that. Uh, he died in 1929, almost penniless, uh, in a nation that did not honor his sacrifice. Now, it really is sad, as big of a badass as Henry Johnson was, that he had to suffer uh, and face the things that he had. But when talking about the Hellfighters, most African Americans, like them, really saw the war as an opportunity to demonstrate their patriotism and their place as equal citizens in the nation. Uh, the Hellfighters are hands down one of the most influential African American units of all time, arguably more so than the 54th Massachusetts Regiment in the American Civil War, the Tuskegee Airmen in World War II, and what was really cool is that the Harlem Hellfighters were one of the most decorated units in the First World War. 151 Hellfighters were decorated for bravery, which is more than any other American regiment. France, you guys are awesome for the way that you treated them and so many other African Americans during this time. Like, There was a mayor in a French village who wrote, after having issues with rowdy white American soldiers, said, take these soldiers back and send us some real Americans, black Americans. 
because the African-American soldiers were known to behave better. This is really cool. The Harlem Hellfighters were awesome. There's so many things you can learn about them, including like what they did for jazz. Like They brought jazz to France and Britain for the first time. So just go research them, Henry Johnson, everybody uh, that you can about these guys because they're really cool and honestly should be one of the biggest stories of World War I. Well, this mission is about to end. Again, I'm going to be doing this with other missions, so feel free to subscribe if you guys have not already. You guys can follow me on Twitter, at underscore war is hell. There's also my Patreon, too, which goes to pay for some of the research that I end up or will end up doing uh, for this. But I hope you guys enjoy me playing Battlefield 1 and telling these types of stories. I don't want to go through and just talk about, oh, that was a sweet shot, or like right here where I end up missing a couple. That's not the commentary I want to do with this. I want to make sure that you guys learn through this and kind of understand a little bit more about World War One, so you can actually better enjoy the game. Warfighters, war is hell, but you don't have to worry because Warfighters, I've got your six. They push. We push. Every once in a while, we push hard enough that the light breaks through the clouds. It's in a world beyond the war glimmers. Just out of reach. The war is the world. And the world is the war. But behind every gun sight is a human being. We are those people. We are the jaded, we are the naive, we are the honorable, and the criminal. We are the bound for legend, and the lost to history. We are the knights of the sky, the ghosts in the desert, and the rats in the mud. These are our stories.